ACOE paves the way for a new subdivision. A community in Southwest Orange fights for their rural area. The Garden Theater still dealing with drama. And voting is over until November. The date is August 25th, 2022. We're going to go through these stories and more. Welcome to West Orange on the Go. My name is Austin Arthur, and this is where we do local news and comments. And when I say local news, I mean hyper local. West Orange, this is your news. We begin in 10 seconds. You're listening to West Orange on the Go. Brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the go. The Ocoee City Commission paved the way for a new 48-home subdivision during its most recent commission meeting. Commissioners approved an increase in residential density for the planned unit development project there. The property is located on West Road and sits on about five acres. Now, low-density residential, or LDR, includes a density of four units per acre. That's four units per acre. And the high-density residential, HDR, includes a density of between 8 and 16 units per acre. So that's from four units per acre to up to 16 units per acre. So that's a big difference. The development project will consist of construction for 48 single-family homes. And another city of Ocoee News, they announced that they will be hosting a ribbon-cutting ceremony from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday, September 8th. Now, this will provide residents with the opportunity to visit the new city hall, the beautiful new city hall in Ocoee. And a time for prayer will be included in the ceremony. Amen to that. Let's not shy away from our faith. South Orange residents were not afraid to speak their mind during a community meeting held by Orange County government to get public opinion on a Love and Care Windermere Veterinary Clinic proposed in the West Windermere Rural Settlement. The clinic is requesting rezoning and an amendment to the future land use map to build an animal clinic at 8236 Conroy Windermere Road. Now, the petitioner, one Dr. Singh, moved to Conroy Windermere Road in 2013 and said he has outgrown his current facility. Now, he bought the 1.5 acres years ago with the hopes to one day expand onto it. Now, residents were allowed to ask questions after the presentation from the petitioner. And the consensus at the meeting, uh, which was held at Olympia High School, was that they do not want an animal clinic moving to the site and creating additional traffic, bringing noisy animals, and destroying their rural way of life. Now, this is a common trend in West Orange County. Several folks raised concerns about specific issues, including the business being turned into a boarding facility, Cleveland Road becoming an access point, and Dr. Singh expanding the business further in the future once the land use has changed. Now, one Maria Hamilton, well, she expressed disdain for having to fight for her rural community. She said, quote, When he purchased the property, he knew it was residential, but he didn't care. He wanted to put that there. He's already wanting to change things. As for the buffer, I don't buy that. He's already extending the driveway all the way to the water. Once one thing is changed, it's so much easier to change the next. This week's paper, the full story is there with all kinds of quotes from residents and the responses from the petitioner. It seemed like there was just a complete (laughs) rejection by the people. Uh, Sometimes you wonder when these 
you know, certain business owners are, are thinking about moving into a neighborhood and everybody's against it. You, you just kind of wonder why would you want to do that to yourself? But the good news for the residents is that it appears that county staff will recommend denial of this change to the Board of Commissioners, and they will surely follow suit and deny it. It's what it appears to be. Uh, So it seems that for now, the settlement, the rural settlement by Conroy Winnemere, well, that will be preserved. And moving on to the Garden Theater The Garden Theater. The Garden Theater's board of directors released an update in relation to the ongoing controversy surrounding the turnover and highly visible roles in production cancellations. A quote from the board, quote, After months of working in good faith to find common ground with Garden Theater staff, The board of directors has made the decision to leverage the near-term programming gaps and temporarily shift our operational focus to the organizational health of the theater. The board and staff will spend this time conducting an in-depth review of our organizational structure and operations, end quote. The board further went on to explain that diversity... Equity and inclusion are matters the organization will prioritize. Now, from an outside perspective, um, let me just say that this whole thing, it's just a little weird. It's a little bit murky. You know, this is just my opinion. You know what I say? Austin Arthur. Uh, A little bit weird. A little bit unclear. Um, you know, what the real issue is that the two sides are fighting on, that they're battling about. I'm just, I don't un- really fully understand it. You know, you get certain buzzwords that come out and, yeah, well, you know. But I am sure that the issues will be revealed in due time. And perhaps we can get back to some good old-fashioned entertainment like we all want. You know, I like the original uh, headline that the Observer gave this story when it first came out. I think it was drama at the Garden Theater. And you can check that archival uh, piece because all of our paper is archived online at orangeobserver.com. Now, as some of you know, I have done some different uh, print uh, pieces where I'll, I'll write about our community and that sort of thing and magazines. And I've also uh, done a show called Afterthought, where we focus on our heritage, history, and community. Now, I bring that up right now because I have to tell you the power of the West Orange Times and Observer. On their website, they have archived just years and years of uh, our history. And it's really impressive. You know, if you want to find out about something that has happened in this community years ago, take it from somebody that's worked to study our history and heritage uh, for the different programs I've done and, and articles I've written, and just from my own knowledge, take it from somebody that has done those things. It is difficult to find things. But thanks to the West Orange Times and Observer, We have all that history documented. And what's really neat is if you, you know, you call the Observer up, I'm sure you can make an appointment or something. You could go over there to the headquarters and you can see these newspapers from over 100 years ago. You know, with your with your own eyes, you could see them. They got them all there. So it's really, really powerful. I can't uh, I can't express enough how important this paper is to our community. And, you know, speaking of Afterthought, our, um, our show that I've done, which I had the Orange Observer on. I had Mike Ng, the editor and publisher, and Cindy Gustafson, my favorite. Uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to release a new season. We got a lot going on in West Orange, and, you know, I want to, um, I want to, I want to dive in again. 
So stay on the lookout for that. I'm, I'm excited about it. If you got any ideas, let me know. It's going to be all things West Orange County. Okay, speaking of West Orange County, we got the, the Great Foundation Academy. Now, they have been serving a Christ-centered education to the students and families of Central Florida since 1958. They are always among the top private schools in Orlando. Uh, Foundation Academy, it's an educational experience. It's a faith experience. It's a sports experience. It's a fine arts experience. They do it all, and they do it all from the beginning to the end, pre-K to 12th grade. Do you care about your values and principles? Do you want them instilled into your children? Do they align with Foundation Academy? If they do, I strongly encourage you to check them out. My daughter goes there, and I thank God for Foundation Academy. Their slogan, if you know me, you know I love it. Foundation Academy, where character matters. All right, now let's go into the final page. We're just going to jump right in. You know, the election season is upon us. This week we had a big primary, and, you know, for the county positions, it wasn't really just a primary. It was their really what we would consider their general election, uh, the only election they'll have. You know, in some cases you got a runoff. But let's let's look at what we got in this week's paper on the results. So, uh, first up, political newcomer Carolina Amesty emerged victorious in a crowded Republican primary for District 45 Florida State Representative. Amesty named rising cost of property insurance, rising property taxes, and infrastructure needs as top priorities. She also said that she aligns with Governor Ron DeSantis and vowed to support his leadership in Florida. Now, she will face Democrat Ali Braswell, who had no primary opponent on uh, this election this week. So that goes straight to the November 8th election. Now, Braswell was chairman of the aforementioned Garden Theater Board of Directors. But he resigned recently to focus on his campaign. Now, that is the south side of Winter Garden, Oakland, a lot of these areas in West Orange. uh, That's what that district covers. Now, District 39, which is also a state representative seat, that covers Highway 50, uh, north of Highway 50. So, you know, north Winter Garden. That's where I live. And um, that uh, race was won by a Christian preacher, a Papka commissioner, Doug Benson. Now, Doug Benson will go on to face the Democrat opponent, Tiffany Hughes. Now, she also did not face a challenger in the Democrat primary. So she her election is just straight to November. And that'll be among uh, or with the victorious Doug Benson. You got statewide. And now let's talk about federal U.S. House. Who's going to go up to Washington, D.C. and represent the West Orange area? Uh, And that is combined with the Lake County area, new lines there. And that will be uh, United States Congressman, longtime Florida politician, Daniel Webster. He defeated soundly opponents Laura Loomer and Gabrielle Serrano. Now, Webster said, quote, I treat everyone with dignity and respect. I encourage each of us to seek to serve others, not ourselves. Unkindness and hatred cannot coexist with a focus on serving others. Webster will face the Democrat Shante Munns in the general election, who also had no primary opponent. Now, in a race between two sitting legislators, Geraldine Thompson defeated Camille Brown for the state senator seat in District 15. The redistricted 15 now spans the northwest sector of Orange County, including northern Winter Garden and Ocoee. And there was no Republican that ran in this race. So that was not a Democrat primary, but actually the deciding vote for who will be the next senator, that is state senator, in our district. 
And in the Orange County mayor race, incumbent Mayor Jerry Dimmings won re-election over challengers Chris Messina, Tony Saab, and Kelly Simrad. Okay, Orange County School Board Chair, incumbent Teresa Jacobs, defeated challengers Domencio Barton and Carl Brewer. The winning judges, well, those, you know, those are a little tricky sometimes. We don't know everything about these folks. We got to dive in a little deeper. But the winners were Alliston Carestes, John Beamer, Vincent Chu, Andrew Bain, Elizabeth Starr, Amanda Bova, and Elizabeth Gibsons. And the voters had a tax question on their ballot. And the voters, well, they approved the referendum to continue the one mill ad valorem millage. Uh, That's a tax. That's a property tax, folks. That is for the Orange County Public Schools. That property tax, that um, one mill ad valorem millage, will remain in effect for four more years. It's extended. So that extra tax, uh, per the voters' uh, decision, will remain until June 30th, 2027. That's a long ways away. So that is the post-election report for the West Orange area as we enter into the general election season coming in November. November 8th is that date. You know, there is going to be some important items on the ballot in November. I want you to stick with me. I'm going to walk through some of this stuff with you. Um... There's a question on the ballot that will be there about, you know, the uh, rent control. And I think we need to talk about it. You know, we don't need one-sided information. We need to hear both sides. So we're going to work through it. It's an important issue, and it will be on the ballot. Let's not have things on the ballot that we are not informed about. So we got time. We got time to work through it. Let's do it together. West Orange, stick with me. We got a long road ahead. This has been Austin Arthur of the West Orange Times and Observer. And until next week, have a happy and blessed weekend. West Orange on the Go is brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the Go.